Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, let's just get into this. Alright. Couple of updates. There's a new mining animation. Um, definitely need to tweak it a little bit, but... Pretty happy with it. Second update. You can probably tell by that glitch right there. Um, there's lighting. It's very basic. And I'll show you guys how fast lighting is with uh, some TNT in a pit. But right now I'm trying to make it as 2D as possible while still maintaining 3D uh, just for the sake of uh, memory optimizations. So a couple of videos ago or last video or whatever I was talking about particles and I was I was talking about um, how when I was trying to optimize the particles in the mind test engine um, I couldn't I couldn't optimize them because uh, the collision detection algorithm that's used in the engine is solidified for AAPB so I'm like I, I know for a fact that particles could be made to use point collision detection and so I worked and I took my collision detection algorithm and I basically gutted it and then I removed references to the the AABB so it only uses the block box collision detection with a single point um, and let me just show you so when I said that I said um, no one's gonna give a poop if part of the particle clips into a block because that happens anyways and I tried this I tried it left and right did like a whole mining session and uh, I'm satisfied with it and this is what I was talking about let me see if I can show you it's very difficult to show actually um, you see how it can clip like right Man, this is so difficult to show. See, it's such a minute thing, I can't even show it properly. Oh, right there, how it clipped into that block. That's what I was talking about. Uh, since that happens in Minecraft and mine tests anyways, I was like, we might as well make this thing as optimized as possible. Because if you're going to have a lot of particles, then they should be supremely optimized. And yeah, it's very nice. So you can probably see they freely fly. They'll fly in midair and they'll use the same friction system that blocks or items use to slow down. Also fix the items not hovering so they look a lot better now all right so let's get on to oh, I'm gonna save the lighting for last actually somebody said that uh, sand not falling looks weird in one of the videos so I'm like I had this like freight train I was doing last night of just throwing stuff in and uh, well there you go there's the prototype, at least. And you can see how um, it can actually fall inside the other one. Because I need to make it just turn into an item, but one thing at a time, basically. Uh, since there is no neighbor update on digging, uh, it, it kind of just sits there. Let's pretend like the sand is compacted for now. Um, okay, let's do this update. Um, just, a, just a little warning, you might want to turn down your volume. There we go. 
So we're gonna blow up this mountain. <laughs> Let's just get up on over here. That'll make a little house. house I've ever seen. This is this is a zero out of ten. Okay, we need some more. Just put some down in the middle. Okay, so um, I've tried to 2DFI the lighting system as much as possible, and so a uh, side effect of that is that the lighting is extremely fast um, as I'm not using any um, native tricks I'm using pure Java to calculate this lighting so let's just get to it you might want to turn down your volume I'll give you a counter three two and a one. Oh my god <laughs> Okay, so you can turn your volume back up. So you can see that that did take uh, a little bit of CPU time to calculate the lighting, but overall um, the actual waiting time is not too bad. And you can see that it actually works as intended. And now this gives me the opportunity to create a better algorithm from this, just work from it. And um, I can do a second pass. And I actually just thought about this right as I was saying that. Because as I showed before, this happens. And what I can simply do is during the step where it updates, if it detects this on the y-axis, um, if it detects darkness, I can create a new update thread during the um, fill loop. And uh, that should make it able to restart the context and create an update again. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, but we're, we're going to find out, I guess. As you can see, if I update this like this, since it's now two-dimensional, it will update perfectly, but as soon as something's put down here, it will instantaneously become pure darkness, which uh, is not very good. Oh god. I can't... Didn't think this one through. Uh, how? Ah, there we go. So, um, let's see. Oh, there was something else I wanted to say. I can't remember. Oh yeah, okay. Alright. So, let's use sand against this stone. So I'm going to show you something. You see how the particles always face perfectly towards the camera? Ish. They're roughly towards the camera, you know. This is called billboarding and I was having some extreme problems with it. Um, the camera vector was being flipped. Uh, it was just 
the, the, the uh, particles are basically facing all over the place. And I'm like, this makes literally no sense at all. Uh, so the translation of the four dimensional uh, float matrix um, was actually translating the rotation with XYZ, where it actually needed to be YZX. And I'm not sure. I thought about that right after I finished the lighting. And I'm like, I don't even know how the hell I just thought about that. Like, I was so. I was genuinely baffled. But I think this is pretty cool. So I can show you, and you're going to have to give this a second because this always takes a few seconds to um, update this. Render following entities, render TNT. This TNT needs to be updated to be more object oriented. Render each item entity. Also, I need to um, fix this line of code. I talked about this in the last video. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to do this out right after this video, but um, you can see how, um, let's see, like this has it stored in its own object, and this, well, the, for TNT, it has a generic, because it's the same thing, but um, like this mesh dot render, this mesh dot render. Basic stuff like that. Uh, basically to follow the particle iteration instead of having to do a redirection to get this item's definitions mesh and then call the render. Just store a clone of it, which um, basically would be like this. So let's say I create the object here. Here's my object. So uh, what's happening right now is the mesh is um, stored in the definition. Whatever that is, if that's an array, a list, whatever. So um, this object is storing the pointer, which is pointing to the mesh. So what should really be happening Oops, pressing the wrong buttons here, is this should negate that completely. Because even though this looks like, oh, whatever, I'm just, just asking this. This thing right here has to do a, a entity where a mesh lookup, but before it can do that, it has to look up the actual um, item definition. Which is not, that could be really slow, especially if there's thousands of items. You should just hold a pointer to the mesh in the actual object. So I'll fix that in a second. Um, but I wanted to show you guys something which I had actually learned while I was doing this. So we have a new assignment hover. Where's particles? I, I've been looking at code for so long. I can't even tell where everything is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Ready? Um, zero dot y. So this is my hack yesterday that I implemented to make sure it worked properly. Let's check this out. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see, so I'll full screen this. Also, I'll do it against a... Okay, you see what's going on here? Do you see how, um... Even though they're upright, they're always facing the camera? Well, I actually... I requested this in the mind test engine, and I've always, I've always wanted this feature, because there's so much I can do with these types of particles. And I'm like, please, please, uh, no, it wasn't a particle, it was for entities. I can implement this for entities or particles, because particle is basically just an entity in the engine. But um, now there's upright sprite availability. 
I think that's pretty cool. So I can use this for things like rain, which I'm going to experiment with. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything, guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this update video. Hopefully you enjoy the particles and the new lighting system. That's only partially implemented. And the new... Um, mining animation. Uh, I think it still needs some more like flex to it, but you know. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Why not give it a like? And if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe? And I have a Patreon banner in my YouTube banner. I mean, I have a Patreon link in my YouTube banner. So anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video and peace out.